In the last lecture, we implemented a simple server in our node application. So if I go to VS Code, here we are implementing a simple server for our node application using this create server method. And when a new request will hit this server, this callback function will be executed. And from within this callback function, we are returning an HTML response. So this HTML variable here, it is basically storing this HTML content. And we are returning this HTML content as a response whenever a new request hits the server. So if I go to web page and in the address bar, if I type root URL, so basically the root URL is this IP address colon the port number on which our application is hosted. You can also replace this IP address, this local IP address 127.0.0.1 with localhost. So both are same only. If I press enter, we should still get the response. And in real web applications, the root URL will be the domain name. So for example, www.google.com will be the root URL for the Google application. www.facebook.com, that will be the root URL for the Facebook application. In our case, since we have hosted our node application in local server, for us, the root URL is localhost colon 8000 or 127.0.0.1 colon 8000. This is going to be our root URL. So when I type this root URL and when I press enter, we are getting this response. Now, if I go ahead and after this root URL, if I enter something else, let's say root URL slash home. And if I press enter, we are still getting the same response. And if I say root URL slash about, and if I press enter again, we are still getting the same response. So no matter which URL I type here in this address bar after this root URL, we are always getting the same response. And that's because of the way we have implemented our server. Now, what I want here is when I type this root URL in the address bar and when I press enter, I want to show the home page of this node application to the user. Also, if I type root URL slash home, in that case also, I want to show the home page of this application to the user. But if a user types root URL slash about, in that case, I want to show the about page of my node application to the user. If he types root URL slash contact, in that case, I want to show the contact page of my node application to the user. And this we can achieve using something called as routing. So before we implement routing for our node application, let's first understand what routing actually is. Once we have the basic understanding of what routing actually is and how it works, then in the next lecture, we will implement routing for our node application. And there, we will send different responses based on the URL which the user has typed in the address bar. So let's learn what is routing. Routing defines the way in which the client requests are handled by the application endpoints. By implementing routing in our application, we can make our application respond with different responses for different URLs. So before understanding routing, let's first understand what are the different URL patterns. First of all, we have file-based URLs. File-based URL is that where in the URL, we specify the file name which we want to access and see in the browser. So for example, here in the URL, we have typed the domain name slash index.html. So this index.html is a file. And here in the URL, we are mapping the URL with the physical file on the server. So when this request will be sent to the server, server will respond with index.html file. It will send index.html file to the client in the response and that index.html file will be rendered in the browser. In the same way, after the URL, if we type about.html, again, here we are specifying the physical file name. Here, this about.html will be stored somewhere on the server. And when we say domain name slash about.html, we are telling server that we want the content of this about.html file in the response. And server will respond with that HTML content and that will be rendered in the web page. So here also, this URL is mapped with the physical file in the server. Then we have resource based URL. In a resource based URL, we eliminate the need of mapping a URL with the physical file. Here, we map a URL pattern to a request handler. For example, here, after the domain name, we have a slash and after that, we are specifying a resource. So this home here is a resource. And based on the resource which we specify after the root URL, we are going to get the response. 
Now, in order to handle this request, in the backend application, we will have to create a request handler. That request handler can be a function or a file. And based on the resource which we have specified in the URL, that function, that request handler is going to handle that request and it is going to send the response accordingly. So when we are specifying this slash home here in the URL, the request handler is going to send us the response for this home resource. If I type root URL slash about, in that case, that request handler will pass this URL and based on the resource which we have specified here, in this case, this about, it is going to return us the response. So here, in case of resource based URL, we are not mapping the URL to a physical file. Here, the URL will be handled by a request handler in the backend application. And we create that request handler using routing. So we can make our application to respond to different URLs with different responses using routing. Routing basically means implementing different actions for different URLs. These actions can be implemented in different ways. For example, by creating a function and that function will be responsible for handling different routes. Now we will learn how to create routes to handle different URLs in our next lecture. A route or a URL can also take a parameter. So basically here, after this root URL, we have this resource. So this product is a resource. And after that resource, we are specifying a slash and a value. So here, this 101 is an ID and this ID is a parameter. Here, we are passing a parameter for this slash product route. And based on that parameter, based on this product ID, we are going to get that product in the response. In the same way, here we have this books as the resource and this programming and JS is the parameters. So when we send this request to the server, the server is going to respond us with all the books which is of category programming and which is related to JavaScript. So this is what route parameter is. Then we also have something called as query strings. So here we specify query string after a question mark. So this is our root URL. After that we have this resource called books and after that we are specifying a question mark. And after that question mark we can specify key value pairs. And those key value pairs are called as query string. So here, this author equal to John, this is one query string. Here the key is author and its value is John. And then we are specifying another query string. And to separate two query strings, we are using this end. Okay, so after this end, we are specifying another key value pair. The key is ID and the value is 101. So in the URL, we can also pass a query string. A query string is simply a key value pair. And when we have more than one query string, we separate those query strings using end symbol. And we write a query string after a question mark. So for this URL, in the response, we will get that book where the author is John and the book ID is 101. And using routing, it is possible to extract the query strings from the URL, the parameters from the URL and the resource from the URL. And we will see how to do that in our coming lectures. So this was a very high level overview of what is routing, what is route parameter and what is a query string. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.